Hi, my name is Andrew Escamilla. I'm an applications engineer here at Maxim Integrated, and today I'm going to talk to you about the long line distance limitations of the I squared C protocol and how those can be overcome using the DS28 E17. The I squared C protocol is limited to only a few meters in standard mode for typical applications. This is due to the fast rise time requirements of the I squared C protocol, as well as some capacitive bus loading that can occur. These strict requirements put a conservative limit on the maximum allowable bus capacitance of only about 400 picofarads. Because of the fact that capacitance increases as the distance along a cable increases, this makes it difficult to use I squared C and long line applications. Some common solutions to these issues are presented in the I squared C bus specification. These include things like driving at a lower speed, uh, using higher drive output circuitry, dividing the bus into segments and using bus buffers, or even using some switch pull-up circuitry. And although these solutions may seem viable on the outside looking in, they either do not meet the long distance requirements we need, or they drive up the cost significantly. Today we're going to be talking about the DS28E17K, which consists of the USB to one wire adapter board. and it also consists of the DS28E17K itself. Uh, all you need to do to get your evaluation kit up and running is connect the two together like so, and then just plug it into your USB. And when you see that red LED flash, uh, that means that you have a successful connection to your PC. And to interface between the motherboard and the daughterboard, I'll be using 50 meters of Cat5e twisted pair cabling. By setting up our system according to this block diagram, we will see how you can use one wire to overcome issues in online applications. On the remote side, we'll be using a DS75, which is an I squared C slave device used for reading temperature. Okay, now we're just going to add in this CAD 5E 50 meters of cabling in between the daughter board and the motherboard of the DS28 E17K. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the USB to one wire adapter. I'm going to connect it to my USB, like so. As you can see, the red LED flashes, successful connection. Then I'm going to connect one of these RJ11 uh, connectors that has a little pinout right here. I'll connect that to the motherboard. And then on the other end of the Cat5e cabling, I'll connect the other RJ11 connector. And I'll connect the daughter board. OK. Now that we've interfaced 50 meters of Cat5e cabling in between the mother and the daughter board of our kit, we'll go ahead and uh, go into the GUI. And here we can see that the devices have been found, namely the DS7505, um, by its uh, ROM ID being shown. And the DS7505 is a temperature sensor. So what we want to do is we want to showcase the functionality of this uh, one wire to I squared C master by going ahead and um, reading from this, um, this temperature sensor. So what we'll do is we will first uh, get the correct slave address as noted in the temperature sensor's data sheet, which is uh, hexadecimal nine zero. Um, and then we will go ahead and we will write uh, zero, 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 zero to the device um, by writing data with the stop bit command. And what this goes ahead and it does is it allows us to access the temperature register. It uh, points to the temperature register so that we can then read from the temperature register, which we will do next. So let's go ahead and press the radio button that says read data with the stop bit. And we'll go ahead and we'll change the read length to two as appropriate for this device. And we will go ahead and we will press execute. And as you can see right here, we get a hexadecimal value of 1980. And 1980 in hexadecimal equates to 25.5 degrees Celsius if you do the conversion that is given in the data sheet of the DS7505. So as we can see, that is about room temperature, which is what we expect. Well, now you've seen how using the DS28E17 can help to resolve long line distance communication issues with the I2C protocol. Thanks for tuning in, guys. It's been great. And until next time, you keep making innovative designs.